if a super volcano were to erupt. Wipe out half the global population. Push humanity to the brink of extinction. Sooner or later, one of these large super eruptions will happen. Official warnings that a hazardous eruption of toxic gas may be imminent. Welcome back, Bad Day HQ fans. This is SOS Earth, episode number five. Supervolcanoes are the elemental colossi of our world. Stories of their disasters have impacted our culture throughout history from myths and legends. Their absolute massive eruptions pose dangers to the whole world and may be responsible for many mysterious periods in the Earth's climate. A volcano is considered super if it has had at least one explosion that has released more than 250 cubic miles of material. We measure the explosiveness of volcano eruptions through the Volcanic Explosivity Index, and to be super, they must measure a magnitude 8 eruption. Impacts aren't always the hell fury we think of, however. Many would cause a mass avalanche or widespread floods and gases releasing into the atmosphere, and so we expect a supervolcano to cause a semi-permanent winter, which could last decades because of the intensity of the gases. Luckily, supervolcanoes are rare, but their potential is massive. They are formed largely on plate boundaries where magma currents pressure the surface, but they are known to erupt in the middle of plates where the pressure buildup is particularly intense. The most famous supervolcano may be Yellowstone in the northern United States. This video will be a brief safari through some of the most dangerous and biggest supervolcanoes on planet Earth. The supervolcano under Yellowstone National Park has the capacity to erupt and spew ash for thousands of miles over North America. Buildings, crops, power plants, it would be a huge disaster. It's thousands of times more powerful than a usual eruption, and we've only estimated three really tremendous eruptions in history. The oldest is 2.1 million years ago, then 1.3 million, and then 664,000 years ago. The dates can be fickle, and there's no proxies to suggest we are due another any time, certainly within humanity's lifetime as a species. It's possible it may never explode again. Perhaps the once intense magma currents have settled and geologically moved on. In September 2014, a group of scientists published a paper in Geochemistry, Geophysics and Geosystems, exploring what it might look like if it did explode. The answer is the United States being buried in three feet of thick, dense ash and mulch, a mixture of splintered rock and glass blanketing the entire Midwest. This much ash kills wildlife and plants beneath it and will certainly kill ecosystems across the entire continent. It would crush our roofs, our infrastructure, our electrical signals would falter with the thick ash in the air. The warning signals are there before the eruption. Erratic seismic activity like earthquakes. It would take weeks for the volcano to break apart to the surface in some cases, and the ash from the initial explosion would in some cases enter the peak atmosphere and begin to roam with the currents of the wind. Certainly air travel in North America would be impossible. The ash would temporarily cool the planet because of this, however, the way the sulfur reflects sunlight back into space, whereas other gases like CO2 will trap it. The volcano at the heart of Yellowstone will probably erupt again. On a smaller scale, 70,000 years ago, Yellowstone erupted with much smaller lava flows and a much more tame effect. The remote possibility of the extreme supervolcano erupting would be catastrophic for the North American continent. Yellowstone is fascinating as a supervolcano and as a national park. Across the other side of the world, however, in New Zealand, there exists a very active volcano that still resides. Taupo is a supervolcano in one of New Zealand's largest lakes. It's been active at least 25 times in the last 12,000 years and is one of the most significant supervolcanoes active today. It is responsible for a huge explosion seen in human history almost 2,000 years ago 
in the year 232 AD. It ejected a massive 120 cubic kilometers of pumice and ash into the atmosphere in the South Pacific. And scientists have for many years been studying the effects and monitoring the lake as a way to detect volcanic and tectonic shifts. The researchers installed many survey stations around the lake, specifically around the eruption point thousands of years ago. The team built water gauges to monitor the lake level, allowing them to detect any height changes as small as 8 millimetres. If the volcano was erupting today, the scientists could use these proxies to anticipate an eruption. In 1983, their warning system worked and signs of earthquakes were felt. The lake levelling surveyors had made their first detection. Key researchers called this the holy grail of predicting earthquakes. After initial analysis, the team realised it was for certain due to volcanic activity rather than tectonic. The data suggested movements of magma and the faults beneath the surface. The volcano caused a significant uplift in the lake. The fact is this. Lake Taupo's volcano is very active and changing and moving, contrasting this to the predictable and somewhat docile Yellowstone. Taupo is inflating right now as we speak, though this is not cause for alarm. Volcanoes move in their sleep, especially supervolcanoes. In the last 150 years, Taupo has recorded 17 times, independently of severe activity, without any eruption. In the event of another eruption like the one at 232 AD happening today, the whole north of New Zealand would be covered in toxic sulphur and ash that would suffocate and kill almost everything. With almost no day's warning, it would be a real struggle to evacuate everyone off the island in time. New Zealand would certainly suffocate under a thick blanket of smoke, with lava chunks, rocks and ash and glass raining down from the sky. As for their closest neighbour, Australia, the main impact would be a wandering, roaming ash cloud. Travel over skies would be very difficult, and Australia would likely suffer a harsh winter and a good period of cooling. Whilst there are potentially about 1,300 active volcanoes worldwide, very few of these are supervolcanoes. Humanity hasn't really seen the full effects of a supervolcano. These are cataclysmic events. These are events that can really end the human story faster than we know. And if one erupted today, well, it would certainly be a struggle to keep civilization as we know it. This was a short safari into the topic of supervolcanoes, which are really some of the most dangerous possibilities on our planet. Although not every eruption from a supervolcano is massive, so perhaps the term is overused. Instead, many researchers are calling them caldera systems, which refers to any volcano that has an explosion massive enough that the surface has imploded sort of in on itself and collapsed into a partially emptied uh, chamber full of magma. But really what separates a supervolcano from a regular volcano is not its past explosions, it's the potential it has really to change the course of history on this planet. The topic of supervolcanoes is huge, far more than we could ever put into a short video, and this was just a safari. So if you're new here, please subscribe, and if you're not, drop a comment down below to see what you want us to investigate next.